In this video, I'm going to show you uh, how to do trust number, what we're calling trust number two, which is really, uh, if you look at the PowerPoint uh, 2.1.6, I believe this is the trust that is in there. I think that uh, the method I'm going to show, take you through, is going to be more intuitive and uh, make more sense to you than just following along on that PowerPoint. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to redraw the truss and create a free body diagram for the, the whole truss. So I'm labeling out my uh, joints, labeling out my distances, and then I'm going to put in my reaction forces. Um, I had uh, applied force here of 500 pounds down at point D, and I'm going to have uh, one reaction at point C because we have a roller joint there. So that's going in the Y direction. I have another uh, reaction in the Y direction at point A. And then I'm going to have a reaction in the X at point A. Next, I start making myself a table uh, that's going to show, keep track of all of the external forces. This table will come into play later. I refer to it uh, when we start calculating internal forces. And it helps keep track of direction and magnitude of our forces. So I label out what I know. Next, I need to solve for the moment. So I set moments equal to zero, and I need to pick a pivot point from which to start. So I'm going to choose point A because that's going to help me eliminate some variables here. So I set up my equation, and I'm just going to put a moment where each place I have a force. So moment A, moment B, moments or D, C, and D. But note, at moment A, I have a distance of zero feet, which is going to mean that's zero. So I'm just going to rewrite it totally without any moment at A because that's all going to be a distance of zero. Next, I look at my other two forces, uh, force at D and, and RCY, and I see which direction of moment they are creating about the pivot point at point A. So I'll find that uh, the force at D creates a clockwise motion, and the force RCY creates a counterclockwise motion. Counterclockwise is a positive moment, clockwise is negative, so I'll note that negative at moment D here, um, where I've got the negative moment created. So now I'm just going to substitute. I get force times distance, so RCY times 10 feet, uh, ne or minus 500 pounds times 3 feet. I get negative 1,500 foot-pounds. I'm just solving for RCY. I'm solving for my force. So 1,500 foot-pounds uh, over or equals RCY times 10 feet, divided by 10, divided by 10. So I end up with RCY uh, equaling 150 pounds uh, positive. So 150 pounds positive in the Y direction is going to be up. I note that on my chart. Next, I move on to some of the forces in the X and some of the forces in the Y. Uh, I list all my forces and add them together. So in the X direction, I have RAX, and that's it. And in the Y direction, I have RAY, I have RCY, and I have the force at point D. So RAY, I don't know. RCY, I just solved for, and is 150 pounds in the positive X direction. FD is negative 500 pounds because it's going down. I solve for RAY, I get 350 pounds positive that's going up in that direction. So I would note that 350 pounds in the up direction. Now I need to solve for my internal forces. So those are the, the members themselves, the forces along AB and AD and BC and CD. So I make a little table for myself and I'm going to solve for all of those individually. So I need to pick a point to start at. So I'm going to pick something with a lot of unknowns or um, the most knowns and the fewest unknowns that should allow me to uh, solve. So I'm going to pick point A because I have two knowns and just two unknowns. Uh, so I'm going to start by, I draw, I write out the joint, so joint A, and I create a free body diagram for that joint. I draw the forces in the appropriate direction that they're going, uh, RAX, I'm just labeling on here, but it's not non-existent really. I also draw my member forces and label them appropriately. Um, but note that I don't have any arrowheads on either one of these. I don't know which direction they are going. I don't know their intention or compression yet. I will update that when I know that information. Now I need to solve for that, that angle that I didn't solve for in the free body diagram at the beginning. So I know that I have a distance of 3 
and four. Uh, so I know I'm going to use tangent, and I'm, I'm looking to find the angle. So I'm going to use inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent, four over three, um, to find theta is equal to 53.13. When solving my internal forces, um, I'm looking at a, only a single point, so I don't have any moments created. So I only needed to talk about some of my forces in the x and some of my forces in the y. So um, I always just write them out and to see what do I need to, which one's easier to solve. So I have RAX plus AD, plus I also have ABX, the x component of that AB vector. Um, then I have in the y, I have RAY and ABY, which means that's the easier one. That's what I'm going to solve for. RAY, referencing my table, is 350 pounds um, up. So that means that ABY at this orientation is going to be uh, 350 pounds down. So I'm going to draw that down and note that if I want to make AB go in the direction down and to the left, I need to have ABX also go uh, to the left. So ABX is going to end up being negative. I'm just going to copy that and move it over here so for better reference. Uh, next, I'm going to just label out my 350 pounds on this one, on A, B, uh, Y, and use trig to solve for uh, A, B. So sine of 53 is equal to A, B, Y uh, over A, B, which means I can rearrange this equation to solve for A, B as A, B, Y, or 350 over sine of 53.1. Um, which makes AB come out to be 437.7 pounds. At joint A, if AB is going down and to the left, it is pointing towards the joint. Towards the joint is considered compression. So note that I've corrected the arrow to be point towards the joint, and I'm now marking in my table compression, 437 pounds in compression. Here I'm going to show a different method uh, that doesn't really use trig for solving for ABX. So I know that 350 is going to be on the 4 side of the triangle, and ABX is going to be on the 3 side of the triangle. I'm going to use a ratio to solve for that. So here I'm setting up a ratio. If I cross multiply, uh, divide by 4, I get 262.5. But we note that ABX is going left. So even though it's a positive uh, number that I got there, I know that ABX is going to the left because it's down and to the left to make that triangle. So I have... Uh, negative 262 pounds that I'm putting in here in my uh, sum of forces in the x equation, which means that AD is going to be 262.5 pounds, and it's going to be going to the right, which means it's going away from the joint, which implies tension. Now we're going to move on to the next joint. We're going to need to solve for more members. Um, so I'm going to choose to start at or move to joint C. Again, because of what I know uh, at that joint. I know RCY, um, I don't know uh, BC, and I don't know CD, but I can probably solve for them. So I'm going to sum my forces in the X, sum my forces in the Y, label out my, my forces in the X, so CD and BCX, my forces in the Y, RCY and BCY. And it doesn't really matter on which one I'm starting. I'm starting on Y here. So I know that I have 150 pounds up at RCY, which means that BCY is going to be equal to 150 pounds down. So I'm going to redraw that BC triangle. So I'm going to start with BCY down. And then I want to get that angle right. So BCX, in order to create that angle, has to be going to the right. And then BC is going to be down and to the right in order to make that angle. Um, again, I'm going to use that, that uh, ratio method where I had the triangle that was 4 and 7, uh, and just setting up a ratio to solve for BCX, and I get 262.5 to the right, which is going to be positive. Um, so I'm using 200, positive 262.5 in my X equation, uh, which means that CD is negative 262.5 I'm going to update that on my free body diagram for joint C and then update my table to appropriately add those to the table. So I have 262 pounds um, in tension because it's away from joint C 
and then I have to solve for BC, and BC is gonna be going towards the joint, but I'm gonna use the Pythagorean theorem because I have the two sides of that triangle with BCX and BCY. Uh, so I'm just gonna use the Pythagorean theorem, and I'm gonna come out with a number that is, oh, forgot to put in my squares, about 302.3, and that's going towards the joint, so that is in compression. Finally, I need to do one more joint to solve for the one remaining member that I have. So I'm gonna to move to joint D. I could have chose either B or D. I'm choosing joint D because there are no angles. Everything is at a right angle. I'm either directly in the X or directly in the Y. Note that I know which direction A, D, and C, D are going. I've found both of these members to be in tension, and tension is gonna draw away from the force. Um, if I look at C, D over at joint C, I'm gonna see that I'm drawing it to the left because that's away from that joint. Um, I need to do a physical demonstration in class to show you how this is true, but tension is away from the joint, compression is towards the joint. Once I've got all my forces labeled out, I can then start to set up my equations. So some of my forces in the Y is zero. Um, I have uh, BD and FD uh, the force at D is 500 pounds down, which means that BD is 500 pounds up, which is away from the joint, which means that's in tension. So I can now update my table, and then really I only have one last step uh, after this, so that's in tension. The last step is to redraw your truss. So I'm going to mark all my joints. Uh, label them with the appropriate letters, and then start drawing my external forces. So I'm drawing them in the direction that I found them to be, and I'll, later I'll label them with their actual force values. Um, so here's my initial force. Then I'm going to draw the internal forces. So I'm going to take each member, and when I have tension, I'm going to draw away from the joint, and when I have compression, I'm going to draw towards the joint. So again, when I have tension, I draw away from the joint. When I have compression, I draw towards the joint. Then I fill in, again, all my values for each uh, segment, for each member, and I'm neglecting here to put units, but it's all in pounds. And I do the same for my external forces. And this is essentially a summary of all the things that I solve for, whether it's tension, compression, which direction the forces are in, and that is my completed uh, force or truss force diagram.